Let's start today with AMC. We did have an upward breakout and a corrective ABC push higher. Uh, you can see that I have these labels here. And this was, of course, correcting a big downtrend we had, and there was a massive surge, and that gets everyone all excited, but this is a three-wave move. It's not bullish yet. It's gonna have to pass this peak at C towards 650, and actually what we're seeing is a downward breakout of an ascending broadening wedge. And you're gonna say, Cap, those candles are going way outside of that pattern and I'm gonna say turn on a line graph and still it's doing that is our after hours turned on sometimes I have after hours turned on um, and that's because some securities trade 24 hours in which case it can be useful so here we go just open hour market movement you're gonna see a nice ascending broadening wedge and we have a downward breakout this could be characterized as a partial rise and the price fails to cross the pattern after coming into contact with one side which would here be the bottom so if we do get a move lower i'm looking for 463 i think i have a, a bigger chart pattern on a different time scale charted and the it's a broadening bottom but if there's a bearish breakout of that pattern then we're looking for 293 so if we get past 536 293 i think that we're going to get this big spill i really do and that's going to be probably alongside of SPY. Now opening GME, because GME and AMC are kind of like related for some reason, probably because the same people are trading them, you know, to be honest, same people. We have a symmetrical triangle of some sort. This is just really a wave two, a corrective wave. And this blue channel shows a motive wave heading lower and you're gonna see the little sub waves through there. Just, it's a downward channel. There was an upward breakout. We find ourselves in an ascending broadening wedge once again. The Elliott wave analysis would suggest that failure to pass above 2189 is an indication of another move heading lower. If that push lower does not form a new low between 15 and 60, then, uh, then I'm quite bullish. At the time, we are now waiting for a low between below, a low below, a low below 1879 to confirm what's called a double top, and then I'll do a price analysis, and that double top target will become a target for my wave five heading lower. I think we're gonna get a nice clean double bottom through here, and then when the markets do bottom, I am expecting them, or I am expecting the meme stocks to explode. But once the markets bottom, once the market's bottom, which is not yet. Let's go to SPY. Currently looking at the hourly chart as with the other charts, we're in a symmetrical triangle here, which is characterized by ABC moves going across. So you're gonna see blue channels, which show motive waves because the first and, and third waves of an ABC correction are motive. So you're gonna see motive, corrective, motive. Motive, corrective, motive. And then the same goes here, but uh, I didn't use channels. I just showed lines and it, it's even possible that this is really going to be a little bigger than I thought. It's very common to have the last touch point of a triangle be uh, passed like a false breakout. The price comes up, overthrows point E, that fifth touch point in the pattern, and then reverses and heads down. I'm not bullish here. I'm not. I'm really not. Not until we get above the last high of around 408. Then we'll talk. But for now, it's like this is a corrective pattern, and it does show some sign that the market may make a forceful move lower to finish the bear market. That's at least for now. Just waiting for more down. So waiting for a clear signal. Moving into SLV. I did make some trades today. I made a day trade, which was kind of fun. Let's open that up. I traded a $22 strike call. It expires on Friday, so it's kind of like what I call a lotto. Because if the price expires out of the money, so for a call that means if the if, if the price closes uh, below the strike of the contract, then it's, the contract expires worthless, hence lotto. Nonetheless, I just made the buy and sell, made six bucks, no problem. Gave myself a hundred bucks here to trade, went SLV. I think I want to just trade, does this just stick to trading SLV? I seem to have the best idea of what the precious metals do or anything. SLV isn't really silver, it's an equities product like GLD, but you know, it's supposed to trend with the price of silver. It's the next best thing to physical, which is ideal, of course. Now in blue, you're going to be seeing a pattern. It is, it may look like a rising wedge, and this is the thing. In Elliott Wave Analysis, triangles have different modalities. Some are corrective and some are actually motive. This one's actually motive. It has five waves, just like every triangle does, except unlike the triangle we saw in SPY where ABC three wave moves define the price movement between each touch point here, we actually have channels of motive waves reaching every other wave from side to side of the pattern. So you have one coming up, 
touching, and then a three wave zigzag, and then a motive wave, and then a zigzag, and then a motive wave, and then a zigzag. What we currently have seen is a downward breakout, but an extended flat correction, not a reversal. And if I turn on the extended hours, actually, which I will do here because this security trades 24-7. You're going to see a little 24 here down at the bottom, which tells us that. You're going to see that waves 4 and 1 actually overlap a little bit at 2043. There's a little gray dashed line through here. And it's like, ooh, do they overlap a little bit? If they do overlap, that is characteristic of a leading diagonal triangle. On the daily time frame, I don't think we actually get that. But I also don't get the after hours. If I turn on a four hour chart, it's a little better. It's closer to the daily. And you can see here, we zoom in. It's like, oh, wow. The price did spend about four or eight hours below that critical level right there. It's like, geez, Cap, really, you're going to zoom in that much? Yeah, I am. Because the nature of this triangle depends on that overlap. It's possible that on an intraday chart that you actually don't get it. So this could be a rising wedge and this could be a breakout. But this extended correction here would be negating any downside from that pattern. So it's difficult. Is it a leading diagonal triangle or a diagonal triangle, a.k.a. a rising wedge? It's very hard to say, but I'm comfortable with the motive corrective wave modality between each touch point signaling that's a leading diagonal triangle. And that can happen in the first wave of an ABC correction or the first wave of a motive wave, which has five waves. Either way, I'm looking for a lot of upside and both of those analyses would suggest a lot more upside. And I'm looking for $32, so we could get there in a hurry. I have a couple of shares, I got some calls. I took some of the profits from that first day trade and I went ahead and bought a 23 strike call that expires on Friday. So if the price is below $23, it expires worthless, and I'll lose a whole $2. But if the price does make it up that high or even gets closer between now and then, I will likely be able to cash out for a profit. But again, that has yet to be seen. So I bought this, I bought some shares down here. And that was based on Bolkowski's suggestion to buy on the third point, the third touch point of a broadening pattern, which I kind of showed like this. It's 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 hard. <laughs> Sideways corrections are grindy, right? I was like, this could be a right angle descending broadening formation. Um, it just depends where you want to draw the pattern. I, I try to use Elliott wave analysis to help me figure that stuff out. Like, it could be a pretty small pattern, too. It could be smaller. Uh, it could just be this big. You know, this could be the pattern, too, right? One, two, three. Buy it, and then we'll see whether or not we can open breakout. We are breaking that uptrend heading lower. I don't know. Very tough to say. For the time being, it looks like implied volatility is heading down. SLV is simply in correction. I'm not going to read too much into it. I think we are looking for more upside in the long term. Looking for GLD now, which is not really gold, but it just keeps going up. It goes up and up and up and up, and I don't, I don't know what to say about that. It just keeps going. I do expect gold to have a massive surge in the nearer future. Gonna go over here and just be like, wow, look at this. Like, this is crazy. So, my first price target for uh, GLD would be 2000. That was based on a rising wedge or a falling wedge, which I think I had at one point drawn through here. Um, obviously, now I don't remember. And it's just been a while since I've even looked at this chart. We're gonna go to weekly max. Uh, this is a trend line analysis. And my price target here is seriously like $2,500 or something like that. Nonetheless.